Hi, welcome to our final section, our final topic in this chapter on pronouns, the non-selective indefinite pronouns. We'll be looking at someone, somebody is at the door, and something is in my coffee. Let's have a closer look. These non-selective indefinite pronouns that begin with some are used to, one, describe some person or object or idea. That is one person or object or idea that is not defined, but that definitely does exist. It, is often, it, can, it can also be used sarcastically to refer to someone present in a room. Uh, we'll see an example of this in a, in, later on in this, in this topic. And if used in a question, it is more certain that we will be answered. It, it, remember, I mentioned in the topic on any that you can that any and some and non-selective indefinite pronouns that begin with any and some are similar. They are different, however, because when you use any, it's not sure that there that you are referring to something. It's any. It's not something specific. And if you ask a question using any, you're not sure that you will have a response or that the thing you are asking about actually really exists, or that you can have a response to it. When you use the non-selective and definite pr pronoun some, it is much more definite because it does refer to an actual thing that does exist, but it's not clearly defined. It can be a little confusing, so let's let, take a look at some examples that you can really understand how we use the non-selective and definite pronoun some. Here we see when we can use it with someone and somebody, which refers to a person, and something, which refers to a thing. And similar to any, it refers only to one thing or one person. With somebody and someone, we can use it to say someone is at the door, somebody is at the door. These two are interchangeable. That means that someone and somebody mean the same thing. When we have someone is at the door, that means that we know that there is somebody at the door. We don't know who the person is, but we know that we heard a knock at the door or we heard someone ring the doorbell. So we know that there is a person at the door, but we don't know who it is. We can't use anybody in this situation because if we say anybody is at the door, that doesn't necessarily mean that there is a person there. It means that there's a possibility that there could be a person at the door, but we, we're not sure that there is somebody there. In this example, somebody is taking all the space on the couch, or someone is taking all the space on the couch, means exactly the same thing. This is what I was talking about. We can use it, somebody and someone, to refer to a person in a room sarcastically. If, we're, if we don't want to say, you, or point the finger at someone, or at a specific person, even though we know who it is, we might say, someone is taking up all the space on the couch, which means that we're referring to a particular person in the room, but we don't want to call them out by name. People use this a lot in English when we're to, when to talk about somebody else, that's someone that's in the room, when they don't want to name the person. Then we can use something to talk about, to use it again, in, tangible and intangible, something that we can actually hold on to and see, and something that we can't. So something is in my coffee. That means that we know there's an object in our coffee, but we don't know what it is. There's some thing floating around in my coffee, and I think it's really disgusting. Or we can use it to talk about something intangible, an idea or a uh, concept or something that we can't actually see. Something is bothering me. Now, obviously, there's something bothering this man, but we don't know what it is. It could be he has a headache. It could be that he uh, just lost his, his cat, that he stubbed his toe, that he got in a fight with his boss, that he got fired. Anything. Something is bothering me, but we don't tangibly, we can't see it. We don't know what it is, but we know that it is there. Again, let's take just a quick review of what we've seen in this topic with some uh, take a look to become more familiar with how we use it, and a, and a review of all the non-selective and definite pronouns that we've seen in this chapter. Hope you've enjoyed it, and stay tuned or have a look at our other chapters. I'll see you there. Bye-bye for now.